Hello there, it's Gabby here from Confidence After Cancer and I hope this finds you well. This week I'm going to be talking about a topic that comes up so many times for people that I'm working with and people that I speak to um, after their cancer treatment has finished and that is how can you stop living in fear of recurrence? What can you do if you are constantly worried about the fact you think your cancer might come back and the future might seem so uncertain? So I've got three tips for you this week of how you can deal with that uh, fear of recurrence, how you can eliminate that fear of recurrence because living in fear to me is not living. So I get it, I'm not saying that, that way of thinking is not without foundation of course it is and you know one of the biggest things that hit me after my cancer treatment was um after the treatment's finished it wasn't over for me it wasn't over it wasn't just the physical recovery that I needed after my uh, cancer treatment had finished I was exhausted physically and mentally and so the fear of recurrence um if you don't deal with that can really overshadow that what's left of our lives none of us know how long we've got left but surely we all want to live positive inspired uplifting lives and i'm not saying you, you can be like that 24/7 but certainly there's so much that you can do to take away that fear of recurrence and i'm going to tell you my three top tips for that today so the first one is to follow a plan have a structure, have a plan in place to deal with all the aspects that you might want to look at after your cancer journey, has, uh, after your cancer treatment, I should say, is finished. So thinking about your nutrition, thinking about your exercise, thinking about your relationships, sorting out on any, any unfinished business that you've got, maybe sorting out your financial situation. So many things that need looking at. And I cover this in my Confidence After Cancer online course and I cover it in my coaching. I do one to one with people as well. But having a plan, having a plan in place and really giving that serious attention and working on a plan with somebody who's there to hold your hand, somebody who's been in your shoes. All our journeys are different. I know that. But once you have recovered from a cancer diagnosis, it really does help sometimes to talk to somebody who's been there, who's walked in your shoes. And so if you follow a plan, you know you've done everything in your power to stop the cancer coming back. OK, there's no guarantees, of course, with any of this, but you've done everything in your power. And that is such a, a powerful word, if you excuse the pun, because when you get that cancer diagnosis, you feel powerless at the time. Your hands are quite right in the hands or sorry, your health is in the hands of your medics, your doctors that are looking after you. They are the experts. They get you through this uh, treatment that you're you're embarking on. But actually, the power is in your hands now. Once treatment is finished, you have the power to come up with a plan or work with somebody who's got a plan for you and say, I'm doing everything that I can. I'm throwing everything at this. And I often say, you know, I studied uh, cancer recovery and cancer remission as if my life depended on it, because, <laughs> spoiler alert, it did. I was told my cancer was rare and aggressive and had a very high um, recurrence rate. My prognosis was not good. And so I de decided to study, follow other people, follow other people's plans until I devised my own plan. Um, but following a plan means to me that I've done everything that I can. Yeah, and it's given me power. And that's a nice feeling that helps you have peace of mind if you know that you've done everything that you can. The second thing that I'd like to talk to you about is about the question that a lot of cancer survivors ask themselves and that is but what if my cancer comes back and some people are playing that question over and over in their minds you know we all have self-talk it sounds a bit daft talking to yourself but we all do it you know I've talked before about the power of affirmations about the power of choosing um a better thought. We all have the power at any one time to choose our thoughts. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, I couldn't help it. I, you know, I worry about it and there's nothing I could do. You absolutely can do that. You might have to train yourself. It's like learning any new skill. It might feel strange at first, but you can at any time have the power to choose a better thought. So just remember that, my darling, and just tell that nasty thought when it's coming into your mind, just sweep it away and just say, no, I'm not listening to that. The other thing I ask you to do is just to reflect on if you're asking yourself what if my cancer comes back why not ask yourself the opposite of that what if my cancer never comes back what will my life look like then 
if it never comes back, what would I be able to do? What would I be able to be? What would I be able to achieve in my life? If the cancer never came back, what would I want to do? And then I would ask you to play that scenario out in your mind, have a little daydream if you like. I used to get told off when I was younger for daydreaming, but I quite like this now, is imagining my life in five years time, in 10 years time, hopefully in 20 years time, of what would my life be like if I'm happy and healthy and my cancer doesn't come back? What does my life look like then? And I'd invite you to think about that as well. And the third thing I said, I was going to tell you three top tips. The third thing that I think is so vitally important in cancer recovery is to surround yourself with cancer thrivers. I'm not saying survivors and I, I'm not, you know, looking down on anybody. But I know there are some Facebook groups and I've joined quite a few of them in the past as well, where it's full of cancer uh, people are going through cancer as well, which sometimes can be useful to talk to people who understand. But quite often those groups are filled with fear. They're filled with people saying, oh, what if my cancer comes back? I actually saw somebody writing one once, well, it always comes back. And I thought, well, that's a, a strange belief to, to have because it doesn't always come back. That's not true for one. And secondly, if you believe that, what, what way to live your life? So I'm, again, I'm not judging anybody here. And I'm sure, you know, that poor woman is probably just living in fear because she's not learned how to overcome her fears. But I would say, surround yourself with cancer thrivers. So my Facebook group, Confidence After Cancer, I don't allow any of that negativity. And it's not, you know, BS. It's not saying that every day is wonderful because it's not. It's life. We have our ups and downs, you know, as Ronan said, life is a roller coaster. Um, but my cancer group, Confidence After Cancer, is full of cancer thrivers. And these are people, mostly women, there are some men in there as well, that are choosing to thrive after their treatment finishes. They're chasing their dreams. They're starting, some of them are moving um, house, some of them are moving countries, some are starting new relationships, some are starting new jobs, some are, are pursuing qualifications that they've always wanted to, to study. Some are starting their own businesses. Um, and that was like me, you know, I really changed direction after my cancer diagnosis. I'd, I'd always enjoyed coaching. And that's what I wanted to be was a coach. So I created my own business. So I would say surround yourself with people who are focusing on how good life can be, not how cruel it can be sometimes, because it's cruel and it's unfair to all of us at, at times. But let's not stay there. Because for me, just as important as your physical recovery from cancer is your mental recovery, you know, your health and your happiness and your joy. They are the goals that you should be pursuing. In my view, for what it's worth, that's how I want to live my life. That's how I want to live, lead my Facebook group and on my socials as well. That's a message that I want to, to share with people is once your treatment is finished, it's a tough time and nobody prepared me for how tough that was going to be. I really expected when my cancer treatment finished to be able to bounce back and just go back to being the person that I was before. But I wasn't the same person. And my priorities, my goals, my outlook on life had really shifted, but not always for the worse. You know, there's a lot of uh, gifts in the lesson. I wouldn't say cancer is a gift because that's not true, but the, the, the lesson and the experience that you've had. And remember, you know, my love, and it's such a cliche, but it's so true. Life is short and life is what you make it. So what do you want to make it? That would be my question I want to leave you with. So remember my three tips for not living in fear. First of all, stop the fear, follow a plan. If you haven't got a plan, I've got one that I can share with you. Reach out to me and I'd love to talk to you about that. The second one is choose your thoughts. Don't let those thoughts to run away with you. You are in control of those thoughts, even if sometimes it feels like you're not. And the third one is to surround yourself with positive, uplifting cancer thrivers, people who are loving life, people who are making things happen, I refuse to let a cancer diagnosis lives and so on that thought i want to say thank you as always thank you so much for listening it means the world to me i hope you have an amazing week i hope that you are enjoying the weather wherever you are thank you so much for listening and to stay safe and stay sane thank you my love take care bye bye <laughs>